Hey, it's V. It's M. Rob with your third video of the COVID era 2020 teaching. And I got to tell you, I don't have a cute intro for this one. I got nothing. We're going to play the integer card game, though. It's not as exciting as it sounds. It's just adding integers. So let's just do it to it. You have this document here. You're going to open it in Cami. And I have to find my pen. Ah, uh, that's the beauty of the pause button. Okay, so we're just going to do this. We've already done chips. And then we moved on to number lines. I'm going to use a number line in this lesson. And uh, if you had some confusion in the last lesson that involved some word problems, we'll have some more practice with that too. Because you're going to have to write some on your own. Oh, yeah, I can hear it. I can hear you moaning. I don't care. I mean, it's okay. So, <clears throat> we're going to jump right into it. A card would look like this. It would be like a rectangle with a number on it. We'll play cards later if we get to probability. But here it says, what's the value of the sum? Sum is an important word that is often forgotten what the real definition is. It means the answer to an addition question. So anytime you hear sum, you're going to add. Of the cards, cards are just integers um, shown. We're going to use the counting on method, which just means use a number line. Sometimes you um, are told to do a problem a certain way. Now, I'm not going to do that to you all the time, but it is going to happen to you some of the time. I will tell you, I want to see the number line. I want to see the chips. Truth is, is real life, if your boss says, I want my work turned in on yellow paper, you're going to do what your boss says, especially if you want to keep your job. So um, we're going to use the counting on method, like Simon said, and we're going to get the answer. So you guys are, I'm going to do a lot of pausing and then flashing the answer. My expectation is that you are going to try this stuff on your own before you unpause and look at the answer. Because if you don't, and you don't practice anything on your own, you will not be ready when I grade you on graded worksheets, and you definitely will not be ready when I give you a test grade. So, I will know who put in the effort when I go to do graded assignments. So, it is better to be honest and pause and do it on your own. You can always go back and erase it. No big deal. So, I told you when we're doing a number line, we are always going to start at zero. I can do some curvy, curvy arrows, but I like to do them uh, kind of straight. I like to do humps to count all my spaces. I always do a dot at the beginning, the arrow at the end, and then I like to stack them. Neatness counts with your drawing. So it says five, so I have an arrow that goes five. You know, I don't need my humps for that one. I'll just draw it to five. Okay, so I did this. The next arrow, I do not draw to negative 5. I go left 5 from where I was. Don't just point the arrow at these numbers. Move that many spaces. Move 5 spaces to the right. Done. From there. So I'm going to go on top of it. I'm going to draw my starting dot. And I'm going to go left 5 spaces. I can put the humps. But do you know where left five spaces is going to take you? I'll bet you do. It takes you right back to zero. Okay, so I did that one. That's because these are additive inverses. They're opposites. They cancel each other out to zero. I'm putting it on my picture anyway because I'm practicing. Okay, now from where the last arrow ended... We are going to put a dot above it to start the next arrow. And it says go left. Negative is to the left. Negatives are to the left. Left four. I'm going to draw my humps. One, two, three, four. This happens to coincidentally go to negative four because I started at zero. So actually, you know what? With, uh, it's really good to label this stuff. This one was the five arrow. 
This one was the negative five arrow. It's facing a different direction. This one is my negative four arrow. And on top of it, trying to line it up. It's a little off, not a big deal. We are going to go right eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And my arrow. There are no other numbers in this problem, so my answer is pointing to my answer, which is four. What is the final position on the number line? It is four. The sum of these four integers is four. I can change the order of these cards. Will it change my answer? If I give you these cards on the table in a, in a different order, would it change the answer? No. You know what property that is? What property says I can change the order and still get the same answer? Say it out loud. It's commutative property of addition. Commutative property says I can change the order and get the same answer. Okay, what card or combination of cards would you need to get back to zero? This is where you pause. You put some answers down and then unpause. What card or combination of cards would you need to get back to zero from here? If I want to get back to zero right now, I'm going to go left four. If I didn't want to get back to zero quite so fast, I could have went left one and then left three. Get what I'm saying? Or left two and then left two again. Or left one and then left one and then one more and then one more. Okay, you're gonna have to understand that in this assignment there's gonna be multiple answers for some questions. So later on you can check my answer key and if your answer is not in the answer key and, and you're not sure if you did it right, you're gonna wanna message me and ask me if you did it right. Okay, how should arrows line up when you're counting on? You know, uh, the starting dot goes to ending arrow, then the arrow touches the next dot. Something like that. If I haven't already mentioned this in another video, I want you to know this word. <clears throat> it's vector. So I'm going to put a vocab word in here. Vector. Vector is the villain in uh, Despicable Me. He has magnitude, which is strength, or amount, or when we're talking about arrows, you can see the strength by the length. You can see the strength by the length. But a vector doesn't just have strength, it has direction. So, for example, these have the same magnitude and different directions. This arrow is shorter than this arrow. It has less strength. And it goes to the left, just like this one goes to the left. All right. Now, I want you to try to answer these at the bottom on your own and then check the answers. Okay? So pause the video, do the bottom, and then check your answers. Okay. Seven is seven units from zero. The opposite of seven is negative seven. How far is negative seven from zero? It's also seven units, which is interesting. The positive seven is seven length. The negative seven has a length of seven. The, the length or distance something is from zero is called its absolute value. This is absolute value symbol. This is absolute value symbol. Okay, those, are, those bars are absolute value. This means the distance 7 is from 0 is 7. The distance negative 7 is from 0 is 7. They have the same length. OK? 
Okay. Thinking back to our previous work, how would you use the counting on method or the number line to do this? You start at zero, you go up to seven, or you start at seven and you go left to seven, which is this, bringing us back to zero. So the next answer is what happens when you get seven to negative seven, you get zero. Okay. And if I went too fast, you can always pause it. So you can copy all this stuff down. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next page. So it says, look at the curved arrows. I drew straight ones. It's okay. For 7 and negative 7, what relationship exists between these two arrows that you would use to support your claim about the sum of 7 and negative 7? Well, remember we did this? Their absolute value or their distances are equal. They have equal distances just opposite directions and when we have opposites they add to zero do you think this will hold true for any number in its opposite well I think I just said that so another way to say this is if I go right or left an amount and then I do the same thing this different direction I'm gonna go back to zero and back the same amount in the opposite direction I will always be back to zero. And that's what this is saying, even though it looks really fancy. A number, any number, with a variable that represents any number, and the opposite of that number is always zero. And that's what it says right here, it gives you an example. Over here, you're going to see practice problems. I'm not going to do those with you. You actually have to do those on your own. And then you can check the answer key later. Okay? You're going to practice these on your own, writing your own word problem, and then check the answer key later. So, for a little teacher tip here, um, this is a word you might not know the definition of. You do have the benefit of using the computer and looking it up. Elevation something you talk about when you're like in a plane. It's the height. Money. Oh, you're going to learn about money. Credits and debits. If, if something's credited to your account, it's going into your account. Yay. If you're using your debit card, you are taking money out of your account. Okay. Temperature you're probably familiar with from science class. Uh, so we're trying to write stuff that has uh, a positive and negative, choose a card, and it's additive inversed. So if I'm going up five feet, I'm going to go down five feet and be back at sea level. Money. If I put, you know, $50 in my account and then I bought a $50 pair of pants, I now have zero. These are examples of word problems. Temperature. The temperature goes up 20 degrees in the morning and then goes down 20 degrees in the afternoon. I'm back to where I started. Um, there's more examples over here. And if I didn't already talk about this before, we need to talk football. Football is just plain American, okay? I'm hoping the Bills make the playoffs again this year. And hope more Bills games are on than Jets or Giants because I don't want to watch them. So we need to know about football. In football, you start at a line of scrimmage. A line of scrimmage. So in math class, that would be like zero. Everybody lines up at the line of scrimmage. Okay? So we're going to have to learn this word. You didn't think you would have to do sports in here. Well, you do. If I have a football word problem, you're going to need to understand that. So if I gain yards, I'm going to go to the right because that's positive. Gaining is positive. If I lose yards, I'm going to go back. 
All right. I don't know if there's anything else we actually have to know about football. If I'm wrong, please message me. I thought of one more word. If you hear of a sack, somebody sacks the quarterback, it means they push them back behind the line of scrimmage. They lost yards. A sack is when you hit the quarterback. The quarterback is the dude with the ball who throws it. If you sack them, it's good for you on defense. It's bad for you if you're in offense because the offense just lost yards. Okay. All right. Talk to you soon.